Most people think all dinosaurs were alive at the same time, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Dinosaurs were around for hundreds of millions of years, which allowed for a lot of time for evolution. So today, we're gonna be checking out the entire evolution sequence of dinosaurs. Starting off 250 million years in the past, the Triassic period. As you enter this new era, you'll notice that the dinosaurs running around look pretty different from what you're used to seeing. One of the earliest dinosaurs that emerged from the archosaurs was the Eoraptor. This little guy was about the size of a dog, barely one meter tall and weighing in at a meager 10 kilograms. I'm not gonna lie, I thought there was only the Velociraptor. I didn't realize there was a whole species of different raptors. Pretty much the only thing I know about dinosaurs is playing Ark Survival Evolved, which to be honest has actually helped me quite a bit with learning all the dinos. But I did not know that an Eoraptor existed and it's quite small to be honest. I think I could take one one on one. You know, we typically think of dinosaurs as these massive creatures, but it'll be a couple million more years before that started to happen. Okay, so we'll they started off really small. Those dinos are growing in size as we travel through time. But for now, let's see what's happening to Earth. During the Triassic period, the supercontinent Pangaea starts to fragment, slowly altering global climates and ecosystems. The climate was generally hot and dry, and there were no polar ice caps, creating a stark contrast to what you're typically used to in modern-day Earth. The vegetation was also very different and was crucial for the survival and evolution of dinosaurs. The plants have different characteristics as well. Some are tough, some nutritious, and Ew. others potentially poisonous. Each one of them will influence the dietary and adaptive strategies of different dinosaur species. Right, so the way evolution works, and I'm sure that's kind of what he's explaining right now, actually, and I'm sure he's going to get into more detail, but the way that anything evolves, humans as well, is we're impacted by our environment. We're kind of a culmination of our environment and everything around us. And to my understanding, the reason that dinosaurs and pretty much anything back in those days were able to grow to be so big, even insects, for example, were multiple feet big, I think. They were able to get so big because of how dense the oxygen was in the air back then. That oxygen allowed them to obviously breathe a lot more, but it also allowed for the vegetation to grow much bigger and much quicker, which allowed for a lot more food, which in turn allowed for the dinosaurs to grow to be as big as they eventually became. Speaking of which, what are some other dinosaurs doing during this time? Weighing in at about 23 kilograms and one meter tall, we have the Coelophyte. That guy's pretty cute. It was a little bit bigger than the Eoraptor, but that didn't stop it from being a fast and agile predator that likely preyed on smaller animals. Now, the Herrerasaurus was slightly oh. taller at about 1.1 meters, but was a lot heavier at about 350 kilograms. Okay, I was gonna say, the first two dinos that, that he went over, I think I could take and I want to be one. This one cooks me, though. This one's not even... I don't even think I get a scratch off of that. 350 kilograms? That's like 800 pounds or something. And he's got like a million teeth and claws. Yeah, GG. Thank God I was born now. Well, 27 years ago. And not 250 million years ago. I'd be cooked. Yeah. Then we have the Platyosaurus. Now, okay. this guy is way bigger than me. It stood tall at about three meters and weighed up to 4,000 kilograms. I wonder why it has all those little spikes on their back. It has like a mohawk of spikes. Like most creatures, every single thing about them, they develop for a specific reason. And I wonder why he's got spikes. They don't look big enough to be used as an attack. I guess it's some sort of defense mechanism. So if something like bites its back or its neck, it ends up like stabbing them. But yeah, this thing's huge. I, would, I mean, I would never, ever, ever challenge that. Look at his calf muscles. Good Lord. This was one of the earliest examples oh of how God. big dinosaurs could grow. But wait, they get even bigger than this. Despite their impressive forms, dinosaurs weren't the dominant creatures during the Triassic. What? They had to share their environments with many other organisms. Quetzal Quetzal. All vying for survival in the diverse ecosystems. This was the case until the Triassic period would experience a great extinction event. This was likely caused by massive volcanic activity, climate change, and potentially even some small asteroid impacts. Wait, but I thought it was like almost confirmed that, it, that, it, that a meteor is the one that did it. Or there's gonna be like a wipe of dinos and then they come back and then the meteor hits and that's the big one. That's the big kablooey, I'm pretty sure. Classic period. Here we now, go. Now, instead of dinosaurs simply surviving, this is where they thrive. 
Over the millions of years, different species have been evolving, and dinosaurs are now the rulers of the Earth. They spread across continents, dominating the lush forests and arid deserts. Occupying these areas were some massive dinosaurs, ones that you're probably a lot more familiar with. We have the Stegosaurus. I was about to say, I think if I could be any dino, I'd want to be a Stegosaurus. For me, it's Stegosaurus and Triceratops. Those are the two that I think I would want to be the most. Because nobody messes with them. I think even like the alpha dogs, like the T-Rexes, you don't mess with the Stegosaurus. Its defense is like 100 million. Brachiosaurus and Allosaurus. These were some of the largest creatures ever to walk Whoa. the Earth. They got but some big you dogs. But quickly noticed that it wasn't just these massive beasts that were roaming around. This era also saw the evolution of theropods. These were smaller dinosaurs that had more of a bird-like form. One of the most famous was the Archaeopteryx. It was kind of like a mix between a dinosaur. Bro, that's Archaeops or Archin, really, from Pokemon. If you guys know me well, you know I love Pokemon. I have a whole channel based around it. And that's one thing that's so cool about Pokemon is they base pretty much all their Pokemon off of real animal species. And Archin is a fossil Pokemon, which is obviously based off of this. Archaeopteryx. Feathers and wings, but also with bony teeth and a tail. The Archaeopteryx was a crucial link between birds and dinosaurs. If you wait about 100 million more years, they'll evolve into the birds we know today. Eagles, oh, wait, really? Is that a spoiler? Wait, so birds After today are dinosaurs. After million years, what? the Jurassic period comes to an end. This was after yet no, another extinction GG. event happened. Luckily, this one is more minor. However, due to climate change, volcanic activity, and sea levels changing, some species are going extinct. This once again changes the landscape as the dinosaurs enter their final era. Is that not like seafood? Like shrimp? Is that is this going to be like, do, do shrimp take over the world? As we've been traveling through these millions of years, you may have noticed something's missing. Right, one of the dinosaurs' biggest stars hasn't appeared yet. Say hello to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The T-Rex was a massive beast. It was 3.7 oh meters tall and 12 meters long. Not only that- Wait, so the T-Rex didn't even really exist until like the end of dinos existing at all. Like dinos were chill before the- Like the T-Rex is the one that killed everything. Like that was the alpha predator. It was the alpha dog. If you were a dinosaur before the T-Rex was even existing at all, you were probably just chilling out there. And then the stupid T-Rex rolls around and has to ruin everyone's day. A whopping nine tons. Equipped Holy with a powerful smokes. jaw and incredibly sharp teeth, the T-Rex dominated the Cretaceous Kingdom. It was one of the most dominant predators history has ever seen. Imagine seeing this that in real life. This colossal beast wasn't just scavenging leftovers, it was an active hunter, stalking its prey with keen eyesight and a heightened sense of smell. I thought they stunk at seeing. Is that a myth? That like if you don't move, it can't see you? I thought that I thought that was I thought they're trash at seeing. What happened to that? Among its favorite meals were the sizable herbivores like the Edmontosaurus. But the T-Rex didn't stop there. It would take on formidable opponents like the Triceratops no. and even other smaller theropods if the opportunity arose. With its powerful jaws filled with 12-inch teeth and its strong hind limbs that allowed it to run at speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour, the T-Rex was a master of the hunt. But this period wasn't just filled with massive beasts like the T-Rex. Look around and you'll also notice even more feathered dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. One of them being the Velociraptor. Now, you typically see them portrayed like this with no feathers, but evidence suggests that these creatures were quite feathered. I could take one on. I'm not even kidding. Half a meter? That's a foot and a half. That goes up to my knee. There's no way I don't beat that. And if that's a fight, that's not a that's not a flight. That's a fight all day. I'm cooking that thing. I always thought Velociraptors were scary. This one is the Microraptor. Now, unlike the Velociraptor, its feathers likely were used for. I think ostriches are bigger than that. I could take an ostrich. It's pretty much like a, a Timu ostrich. It just looks cooler. Also, I feel like all we have are the bones for the remains of these things. Whoever ended up actually designing them 
could have done whatever they wanted. And this thing looks so sick. Like they gave it a mohawk and, and wings on its legs. No way that's real, but it looks really cool. Giving us crucial insight into the evolution of birds. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, Pangaea was breaking up and forming into the continents we know today. But because of this, some dinosaurs were forced to migrate and separate into different areas of the world. These dinosaurs had to adapt to their new environments, potentially changing the course of their evolution. But none of this matters when we consider what happens next. The cataclysmic event. GG. Okay, as you've been hanging out with the dinosaurs for millions of years, an asteroid has been making its way toward Earth. Then suddenly, it hits, creating a massive crater 150 kilometers wide and 20 kilometers deep. 20 kilometers deep? I didn't realize it was that big. That's insane. Now, I'm pretty sure the initial impact isn't what killed all the dinos. It killed a lot of them. But really what happened is there was a huge cloud of ash and debris and that covered essentially the entire world, making it so no sunlight could get through. And that killed all the vegetation. And then since there was no vegetation, the dinosaurs had nothing to eat. And so they died of starvation, most of them at least. It's huge makes a devastating impact on the world. Let's see if I'm correct. Right change it forever. The asteroid's collision is massive, but its impact is felt long after the initial crash. Due to the massive collision, the environment drastically changes. Significant drops in temperature start to occur, and yeah, the no sunlight from the crash begins to block out the sun. Bang! This I knew impacts it. not only the dinosaurs' health, but also their food supply. This devastating event wipes out 75% oh, so of the Earth's species, many of which are the dinosaurs we've been observing this whole time. But don't worry, not all of the dinosaurs went extinct. The aviation-based dinosaurs we checked out earlier managed to survive the asteroid strike, eventually evolving oh, into birds. What even is that? Aftermath. Now that most of the dinosaurs are extinct, it's cleared the way for mammals to diversify and expand their impact on the world. Shout out mammals! With less competition, early mammals can now thrive and take over. Guys, we are mammals. That's us. So honestly, shout out to that asteroid that like destroyed the world almost because without that asteroid, we wouldn't be here today. So a lot of people like think of the asteroid moment and are like, oh, that's really sad. That stinks. Poor dinos. Wah -ha -boo -hoo. But you're not thinking bigger picture. Bigger picture is we actually needed that asteroid to hit in order for us to become a thing at all. So shout out to that asteroid. Which slowly over time allowed humans to evolve, building the world we know today. Let's go. Dinosaurs went on to evolve for another 165 million years. Holy smokes. And it all comes full circle now because we have all the Jurassic worlds. We have Ark Survival evolved. So dinos may be dead, but they will live on in memory forever. Anyway, boys, if you enjoyed today's video and want me to react to some more dino themed things, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button and click on this video right here.